Hi everyone, I am so excited today to be chatting with Emma Norris. Um, she is someone that I've been following for quite a long time and has quite an impressive um, career in, in front of her, I guess. Um, just to la label a few, she is a writer, an author, the founder of A Girl in Progress, which I guess is like a, an online community or a platform for women working on themselves for themselves, which is so, so needed right now. So. Emma, thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to cover a lot and I'm so excited to pick your brain. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here and I'm equally impressed by everything you've done. So um, yeah, I'm so excited to chat with you. Yay, so cool. Well, the way I like to start um, these podcasts is to ask who, you who your role model is and who you're kind of looking up to at the moment. Yeah, I have so many. Like, I feel like I have so many from so many different walks of life, but I'm going to cheat and say two people I'm loving at the moment. So the first one is, her name is Cara Lowenthal, and she's the founder of, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on here, but Unfuck Your Brain <laughs> is the name of her podcast. And she is, she's a life coach, but she's very much about teaching women to sort of rewire their brains, mm -hmm. um, I guess, to sort of reach their full potential. Yeah. And I really, so yeah, so she's one. And then the other is Rachel Rogers from, um, we should all be millionaires or um, uh, I can't remember the name of her actual business, but it, that, that's her Facebook group. And she actually, both of these women, funnily enough, are, are former lawyers, even though I'm yeah. not a lawyer who, but I really admire the way they've turned, I guess, go, gone from service-based business to really, um, I guess, building an empire out of mm. their sort of intellectual property and their unique perspectives yeah. and like just a real desire to help women. So yeah, they're both, just like really fearless, badass women who just help women reach their full potential. And I really admire that. So they're two people that I am loving at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I love that idea as well of, you know, starting in a service-based industry and then having the capacity to build something bigger than yourself as well. I personally find that quite inspiring. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And it is, you do, you can kind of reach a ceiling with, you know, a service-based business, mm -hmm. what I found, you know, even with yeah. writing, where you are sort of limited by not only how much money you can make, but how many people you can impact. Yes. So I think there's been a real move towards, you know, obviously courses and coaching and just being able to have a wider impact. So that's, yeah, it's really sort of shown me what's possible. So, which has been awesome. Yeah. And I guess kind of on those terms, like, Let's get into a little bit more about you and what you do um, and just a little bit about who you are as well. Yeah, so I am a writer first and foremost. That's what I've sort of been doing, I guess, for the last 10 years. So I studied journalism at uni. Um, so yeah, I started in magazines and sort of moved into like digital publishing. But I'm also the founder of, as you mentioned, A Girl in Progress, which is, it actually started as a lifestyle blog in 2018, but has kind of, kind of almost through my own path of like really falling in love with self-development mm -hmm. has really turned into, I guess, a self-development destination, you know, with courses, I'm working on getting like coaching services up at the moment, like just really being able to work more intimately with women as well as having that content side of things. Um, and I'm also an author. So my first book came out a couple of months ago, which Yay. has been super exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's on the topic of mindful productivity. So it's kind of within that realm of yeah. um, self-development. So I'm really a writer who is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> obsessed with all things self-development, productivity and helping women be the best version of themselves. Oh, see, listeners, I told you, like, she's got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> we all do these yes, days. Yes, <laughs> yes. I wanted to ask you while you were just talking about it, especially with A Girl in Progress, did you kind of find that that ended up being your journey as well? I feel like for me, when I started The Real Her Project, it was just, you know, I'm just going to interview some people and um, I didn't really have a clear direction, but in the end, it became so much about my progression and my growth and then sharing that with others as well as you went. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I always say that I am definitely the original girl in progress. Like yeah. when I think of a girl in progress, like our whole motto is um, that you can strive to be where you want to be while simultaneously accepting yourself as you mm -hmm. are. And that's always sort of been the way I try and approach things but I've definitely been working on that 
you know, as, as my readers are as well. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's still, I guess, a choice you have to make every single day to, to accept yourself, you know, to be able to be like, I am still, you know, working to be where I want to be, but I'm fine, you know, mm. as I am right now. So it's definitely be a, a journey that I've been on with everyone else. And my community inspires me so much and I've learned so much from them. Like I have a Facebook group for the blog and I just love the community um, that we've got in there because yeah, they teach me as much as I teach them. Yeah, which is amazing. definitely. And it's, it's interesting too, because I feel like there's so much pressure and we'll probably get onto it a little bit later, but there is a lot of pressure to kind of have it all figured out right now. And, and there's such like a, a space for just, girls just you know kind of moving through the motions and going on the journey and supporting each other through that journey because that's an exciting time as well when when you're discovering yourself you know you're putting in the the inner work you're developing um and it's so great to have a community around you while you kind of go through those motions yeah I've definitely found that like because I've worked from home I guess on and off mostly working from home for like the last three or four years and I realized how much I missed having a community Mm. and like having people that you can sort of talk about what you're going through with and swap advice and tips so I think um yeah it's been amazing to be able to not only facilitate that for other people but even just for myself Mm. to have not a tribe because we don't say that word anymore (laughs) but you know just just a, a community yeah and did you ever kind of see it like happening like this? I mean, you studied writing and you've got journalism and everything. Did you see it kind of, I guess, becoming this platform where you're interacting with other people rather than just writing for them? Yeah, that's such a good question. Like I like you say, I come from a, a magazine background and with magazines, you really get no feedback as yeah. to you write this thing. Like I've always worked on weekly magazines um, mm-hmm. and more recently, I worked at Girlfriend Magazine, which was um, every two months, but we were always working well in advance. So you're writing these things and you're not actually getting any feedback from who's reading it or who you're making an impact on. It's just kind of like it goes into the abyss and you like Mm. (laughs) never think about it again. So I find digital publishing is more, you do get more feedback, I guess, in terms of, you know, people might comment on your articles or, um, you know, comment on something on social media, but I think it just doesn't compare to like having a community around it, whether it's, you know, a Facebook group, whether you move into, I guess, like group coaching, it just doesn't compare to that, like that intimacy that you have there and like, Mm. you know, communicating with someone in real time. So I definitely, I definitely really liked that um, aspect of digital publishing. And that was Mm -hmm. why one of the reasons I sort of moved away from magazines into that, but I didn't envision that I would have that, you know, that much connection with my audience. And it's been a really nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's so awesome. And I wanted to know a little bit about, I guess, like your childhood and growing up and kind of what inspired you to write. And then I guess, how did that kind of, trickle into then more of the blog and and eventually into coaching like how is this all kind of led into one another yeah so um so I grew up in Coogee in Sydney which is where I still live um and like from a really young age I just remember my parent my you know my dad reading to me and just being very much encouraged to read like I was just a um an avid reader like Mm -hmm. you know in primary I feel like it was kind of a bit of an escape for me because I was bullied in both primary and high school and it was just like nice to have that place to escape to and that just kind of naturally led to actually from when I was really young like a Mm -hmm. love of writing like I would just write all these like crazy little like poems and stories and make my (laughs) parents read them which they still have which is super embarrassing they like pulled some out the other day and I was like (laughs) I did not write this like no I was like at least I've come a long way yeah so it was just always a love of yeah reading and being creative and almost having that as an outlet and then from a pretty young age as well like I fell in love with magazines so I was like making my mom buy me magazines from the age of like about 10 or something Mm. like when Barbie magazine was a thing I don't know (laughs) if you're young enough to remember that or if I I may be the only person who read it and Sabrina the Teenage Witch magazine was one as well Mm -hmm. so I was just super into like I would just devour it I would like devour it before we even left the like 
yeah. shopping set. Like mum would be doing the groceries and I'd be like walking around the trolley, yeah. like reading it. And I'm like, no, we still have to buy it. She's like, but you've already read the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I would go to my grandparents' place and they would have like all these magazines that I ended up working for, like Take Five and TV oh, Week and stuff. Yeah. And I would just read anything that I could get my hands on. So I, magazines were always, was always it for me. Like it was always... I always knew I wanted to write and then I mm. guess as I approached like late high school, like I knew magazines was what I wanted to get into. I thought it seemed so glamorous, which yeah. in, in some ways it is, but it, you know, it wasn't quite how I thought it would be. It's not all like Devil Wears Prada. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it was just natural for me to study journalism. Like I wasn't one of those people who like ummed and ah. I was like, that was the only thing I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and then I actually started interning at Clio magazine, like through wow. my degree, which was Ooh. because we had to do like an internship subject. Yeah. Um, and I was super lucky to get that. It's probably the best thing that came out of my degree. Like <laughs> I don't really remember a lot of what I learned, but just getting like having the opportunity, like that really gave me the push I needed to, um, you know, start getting myself out there. Yeah. Um, and that sort of led, to me so they have someone on magazines called like the editorial coordinator who's kind of like the receptionist I suppose so when I was interning there I ended up filling in for her when she was on holidays and then I ended up doing that for a few other people this is um ACP magazines mm -hmm. back in the day not that long ago but it's, it's gone through a few changes since then yeah. I just sort of came known as the person who could like fill in and do that role and then that kind of led to me just um I got my first job in media, like actually working as like a picture assistant, which <laughs> was basically the person who does all the like photo research for the magazine, which yeah. wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but it was kind of <laughs> just a foot in the door. Like I was just super, super excited to even get that. And then from there, I kind of ended up like doing a couple of writing roles in magazines, um, which was awesome. And I learned so much doing that, but mm -hmm. I was seeing that magazines were really changing like they were kind of on their way out sadly yeah. and they you know it's even been even more we've seen a lot of changes even mm -hmm. in the last year but it was clear that digital was where everything was going and that you really if you need wanted to survive in media you needed to diversify with that digital experience um so i ended up taking a pay cut to go and work for this um wellness pub online wellness publication that i loved yeah. um and doing like a content producer role there. So really just smashing out a lot of articles for their <laughs> website. And that was basically where I learned, you know, what it takes to run a, a successful blog and even to mm. turn that blog into a business, I suppose. And it really inspired me. And then around the same time I was doing that, I kind of just type to diversify my income. I kind of like, I started my copywriting business and just ended up doing a lot of different bits and pieces like you know whether it was writing website copy or email newsletters or doing social media for people like that was really where this whole journey i guess of working for myself came from because yeah. it was sort of something i started doing on the side but it also showed me gave you know it made me realize i wanted to start my own thing um mm -hmm. and you know it kind of it, i'm sure we'll probably get into this but I guess when I was working at that um, publication, like I was going to a lot of events with like influencers yeah. um, and models and stuff and they were lovely, but they were quite, I guess, aspirational, you know, as a yeah. lot of like influencers are. And I kind of, I just couldn't relate. Like I felt yeah. very different, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of made me realize I wanted to start something that was, I guess, for, you know, the every girl, like the girl who, um, can be a bit of a hot mess sometimes or maybe is a little bit not dorky but maybe a little bit quirky in some ways but who is still really driven mm -hmm. and um, is always working to be the best version of herself and I guess that's where that's what a girl in progress was born out of yeah oh that's so cool and such an interesting um, story and it's it's interesting for me because I feel like if I wasn't such a people pleaser in high school like that's probably the route I would have taken like I kind of had the same upbringing loved writing loved reading um, it was something that came really naturally to me but I was so focused on being smart that I just did subjects that like weren't aligned to my soul so it's really cool to yeah. hear someone like yeah and you've still ended up you know you've taken a roundabout <laughs> yeah. path but 
I was super lucky in that like my dad's a doctor so I, I think it could have been much the same where it was very like like they were always very wanted me to do it well academically but they yeah. didn't really mind what I don't think they would have had much luck trying to like get me to do anything other than what I wanted to do so um you know so that I was very lucky in that they encouraged me to to go down that path and luckily it worked out <laughs> yeah. that's very true there's quite a lot of people on this podcast who are like and then I went to uni and then I never used it again. So <laughs> yeah, I am lucky in that. <laughs> and my degree was only three years. I know people who were yeah. like, who went to uni for six years and then they, yeah. but you know, everything you do, at, it, it all, like all the little bits and pieces that I've done that like even working on the picture desk, like yes. something I didn't particularly want to do. It all comes in handy. It all, yeah. um, leads to your journey and it's like an accumulation accumulation of knowledge from all different yes. things so I think nothing is ever completely a waste even yeah. if it's a uni degree you don't use <laughs> well yeah I was gonna ask you I guess the difference between obviously going to uni and studying something and then also having that real life experience because obviously like you learn the theory and everything but then to me it sounds like when you kind of work for that digital publication that was really like that real life experience that you can literally take and, and implement into your own life as well yeah absolutely I'm a huge believer that you just learn by doing like yeah. I like I said I don't really remember any of the theory that I learned in uni <laughs> like um you just and whenever you know young writers ask me for advice I'm like just just start writing just yeah. start your own blog even if no one's reading it just a place that you can one work on your own writing because you know the more you right the more you read back your own stuff the more you get feedback the better yeah. like it's you can only get better at it by doing it I look back at stuff that I wrote you know just out of uni and it, it makes me cringe a bit but it's it's just clear that you just you know you just finesse it along the way so I'm like mm -hmm. yeah just start getting something out there even if it's just yeah. for you like yeah. there's no other way really yeah you just you got better. Started. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. I feel like we just said <laughs> That's my whole ethos, like just yeah. get started. You're never ready. Just start before you feel ready. Yeah, yeah. And I think that leads on nicely to what I was going to ask you next, which is how important do you think that kind of personal development is in today's modern world, you know, to kind of just start before you're ready and, and put things out there and, and play around and kind of grow personally? Like how important do you think that is? Oh, it's so important. I mean, like, there's no better investment that you can make than in yourself. Like, yeah. you know, what is that expression? Like, wherever you go, there you are. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what circumstances you're in, like, whether you're, you know, like, in isolation, like a lot of people are, whether you're traveling yeah. the world, like, you're always left with you. So if you're not happy within yourself, and you're not growing, then, you know, I guess you're never going to be happy. And like personal development, I've been super into it for the last probably like four or five years but kind of my perspective on it has changed and I guess this kind of ties into this idea of working on yourself but also um, accepting yourself exactly as you are like I used to kind of see self-development as I guess a destination like that I like working to become better so that you can like have the job or be rich or have the perfect body and now I've kind of realized that it's not about it sounds so cliche but it's not about the destination it's about the journey it's yeah. about getting to a place where you're happy with yourself no yeah. matter what your circumstances are where you're resilient where yeah. you're not emotionally reactive where you're you know mentally strong and then it doesn't matter what you know we, we, we still want the nice things but yes. it doesn't matter you'll be happy regardless so i guess my perspective on it has really changed a lot Mm. but it is yeah. always super important like yes. what better thing is there to work on than yourself yeah. <laughs> it affects sure. every aspect of your life your relationships your you know your health your money it's the most important thing mm. and I, one thing that I've kind of I guess accepted recently is that in different phases of your life it'll call for different types of personal development as well yeah. you know I think there's a lot of like pressure to just be like you know, meditating for like 45 minutes a day and make sure you have like this crazy morning routine. But it's like your your different stages of life call for different things. And, you, you know, there might be times in your life where you really do need a lot of um, habits and, and routines to really help uplift you. And then there's other times where life just flows as well and things just feel 
easy and you're, you've kind of, you're using what you've previously learned to your advantage and it's all kind of working out. And I feel like sometimes there can be a lot of pressure to be always working on yourself. Um, but it's really, like you said, it's just about being happy and, and being okay with wherever you're at right now and using whatever tools you need to kind of move forward too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so true. Like I used to be, I used to devour like self-development content on like yeah. building your business, building your yeah. career. And I've kind of now realized like, you know, there is only so much knowledge you can take in, you need to implement. Yes. And now I'm kind of at a stage where I'm really leaning more towards um, content. That's more about like what we said, accepting yourself as you are and being yeah happy within your own brain like so there's definitely different needs for different things and I guess you know when people you know become parents that's a different like you're not going to be trying to be the best version of yourself in every aspect of your yeah. life when you're a new parent yes. you're going to be just trying to make it through the day and be yeah. um I guess gentle and forgiving with yourself so it's absolutely right there's you know different needs for different stages in your life and you just kind of have to accept that <laughs> yeah definitely and I, I see you talk a lot about perfectionism um you know within your blog and, and within your socials as well now is this something that you personally have struggled with quite a bit in the past yes absolutely this is one of my favorite topics mm -hmm. I'm very much a perfectionist not so much so I believe there's like sort of two different types of perfectionists and sometimes it overlaps so there's like I guess the the work perfectionist, the person yeah. who's like, wants to make every last detail perfect when they're working on a project and will obsess over the uh, minute details. I'm not really that person. Mm -hmm. I'm actually quite type B in my, <laughs> like I lead more towards that, but I'm very much a perfectionist in that I'm very, I have been in the past very hard on myself. Yep. Um, and very have very high standards for myself in terms of I guess what I'm accomplishing um, it used to be in terms of like what I looked like just yeah. um, always striving for I guess to I guess to not be mediocre like I used mm. to be very much wrapped up in that so and and then you know I guess that sort of if I did get feedback like say I was working for a client and um even though I'm not that attention, uh, <laughs> attention oriented, if they, uh, sorry, detail oriented, if they sort of came back and said, oh, you know, there was actually a mistake in this, mm -hmm. I would be super, super hard on myself. Yeah. So I think um, I really had to learn just to be compassionate with myself and to, yeah. you know, if a friend came to you and said, oh, I made this mistake and, you know, this client said this, you would say to them, you know, I know it feels bad, but you know, it's, it's, it's honestly not that bad. They probably won't think anything else of it. It mm. doesn't mean you're a bad yeah. writer or whatever it is you do. And it certainly doesn't mean you're a bad person, but mm -hmm. we struggle to show ourselves the same compassion. So that's something that I've really had to work on and something that I'm really passionate about helping mm. other people overcome too. And also the other types of perfectionists who do get too wrapped up in, you know, trying to get everything perfect i you know i love helping those types of perfectionists mm -hmm. because i am so the other way like i'm such a big believer in done is better than perfect and that you just have to get it out there mm -hmm. um and then you can come back and fine tune later so i launched a course on procrastination on not procrastinating um earlier this year and i really loved helping those sort of um type a people yes. i guess get unstuck and just just get it out there and you know and the sooner you get things out there the sooner it can start making an impact so yeah, yeah. I love I love working with that as well mm. yeah because I was gonna say like how does that kind of affect people's careers long term I mean if you're someone who's so um you know procrastinating to the point where work doesn't get done or things are you know thrown together last minute it's almost a, a form of self-sabotage isn't it and you're almost holding yourself back yeah. from your actual potential yeah, it's a huge self-sabotaging um, behavior. And half the time, you know, people don't actually realize they're doing it. But I guess the main thing is it just slows you down. And like you mm -hmm. said, it's like you said, it limits your potential. Like even I've had times where I've come up with ideas for things. Um, and, you know, for one reason or another, I just didn't, I had maybe had too many other things going on. And then someone else has ended up, you know, yeah. doing that. I, if it's a good idea, 
then chances are someone else will eventually stumble yeah. upon it too. So I think you can miss out on opportunities and I think you can, I think you also just torment yourself, mm. um, you know, on a personal level, like yeah. being, wanting, trying to make, get everything perfect because perfect doesn't exist. Like, and it's so subjective. Like even if you get it to a point where it's perfect, there's always going to be people who it might not be their cup of tea. So you just, torment yourself and you, it's preventing you from doing other things as well like if you're yeah. obsessing over the minor details of I don't know like a ebook you've written like it's it's mm. stopping you one from moving on to the next thing but two from just resting and doing things you enjoy so I think it really creeps into not only your career but like your life satisfaction and yeah. and it just means you put loads of pressure on yourself and that that's never a good time <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> um, do you have any like go-to tips when people kind of feel that perfectionism, you know, kind of kicking in? Yeah. So, I mean, my book is called Progress Over Perfections and I feel like that really encapsulates, I guess, my approach to it. I think it's just about trying to take baby steps and not, not look so like big picture at everything or like you said before have it all figured out just focus on the next step yeah. whether it's you know the tiniest thing whether it's like um you know today I'm gonna like put the photos or like upload the videos for my course like just focus on the next step ahead of you and you know take progress there rather than trying to have it all figured out or do it do it all at once and then another thing is just embracing the chaos like we were speaking about before about how you don't there's a chapter in my book about embrace the whack-a-mole of life you know the game <laughs> whack-a-mole yes. where it's like just when you get one thing under control another thing pops up like I feel life is so like that like you never have any every aspect of your life under control at any mm -hmm. one time and I think it can be easier said than done but I think it's just being okay with the life the fact that life isn't meant to be you know a perfectly styled instagram photo yeah. like it is messy and that's kind of the whole point like mm. that's that's how we learn that's how we grow so i think yeah just embracing that chaos and just let, letting yourself off the hook sometimes like mm. just not yeah. being so because the only person who cares that you have it all together is you most of the time other people are too wrapped up in their own things to care so most of the time it's just standards that we're putting on ourselves yeah yeah I couldn't agree more it's just the pressure we're putting back um, on ourselves and I want to ask you a little bit about your book before we finish up but I have another question and I feel like I need to ask that before we move on <laughs> yeah no um, go for it <laughs> what has been like the biggest game changer for you in terms of personal development like what do you feel like has really um, helped you kind of up level and, and grow personally Mm, that's a good question I mean I have to say just investing in courses like mm -hmm. I mean I know that's that's kind of a broad answer but like I feel like I've learned so much from just investing in different education and courses like I'm when I when I invest in a course like I I won't buy something unless it's like the thing that needs to get me to the I need to get me to the next step like yeah. like because I, I feel like you might feel the same that you're constantly being advertised like oh. you're constantly getting like ads for courses just being yeah. in that realm and it can be yeah. so overwhelming and like you're like oh I need this I need this I need this so yeah. I guess it would be only investing in the next thing I need for my growth so like when I wanted needed to learn to write a sales page then I invested in a yeah. course that would teach me how to write sales pages when I needed to learn um to write Facebook ads, then mm. I invested in a course about that. So I think it's like to not get too overwhelmed. It's it's just only focusing on the next step ahead of you. And um, yeah, so courses in general have been yeah. extremely helpful, but not just buying anything and everything because yes. then you just then you're not implementing. Like no. you need to implement as you go. Um, yeah. So I think that's been the biggest game changer for sure and I've probably learned more from them than I have from uni <laughs> <laughs> yeah what's well, the thing as well like because the other way you can do it is yeah you can spend hours on YouTube trying to sort it all out yourself but there is something about like kind of having that okay like I'm actually like I deserve this and I'm going to invest in myself because yeah. you know I want to take this next step and I'm going to pay the money because when you pay the money you pay attention don't you it's it's just like this um step up 
from just trying to, you know, search it for free, you're really committing to yourself and whatever that next yeah. step is yeah. for you as well. There's an expression that's like those who pay, pay attention. And I think that's yeah. so true. And I think there is definitely something to be said for just figuring it out. Like for small things, like if I'm trying to figure out something specific to do on my website, something technical, like, yeah. you know, Google and YouTube is your best friend. But I think courses really give you a roadmap you can follow. Yes. And for people who have been exactly where you are. So I think it's like being selective about, the education you're investing in um because you know it can be expensive but i think sometimes you just need to do that to get to the next level because if i didn't if i hadn't taken any courses i would probably still be i mean guess just writing which you know mm. there's nothing wrong with just writing but i wouldn't have gone down this whole path of i guess um I guess more turning a girl in progress into a business. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. And that's once again, it plays into that perfectionism role about, you know, if you, you know, you can, you know, hold yourself back and not invest in those courses or you can kind of take the leap and learn and continue to grow. Yeah. Um, and it's fine to do that slowly though. Like yeah. I think some people come to me and they're like, Oh, should I invest in like a coach that charges like, twenty thousand dollars like on my first day of business i'm like no like you don't need to do that like just yeah. starts like i started so i probably didn't do any courses until like maybe two two years in or a year yeah. in yeah. i think starting slow because i didn't need to because it was just like get the basics up um, yes. and don't obsess about having everything perfect and then when you need it to go to the next step then you know I shouldn't say this because I have a course. No, no, <laughs> no, I'm the exact same. People not procrastinate. You know, anyone can use that. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm yeah, literally the exact same. That. Yeah. Um, so with your book, obviously it's all about the progress over perfection. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the writing process? I've like watched people go through a writing process and it looks so overwhelming, but I don't know if you've kind of got that edge because you've got the writing background. Um, how was that for you? And did the perfectionism come in at all as you were writing it? Great question. Yeah, the writing background definitely helped just because like even from writing loads of blog posts for clients over the last few years, it's really taught me to write quickly, but it was definitely a whole different kettle of fish mm. writing my book. Like it just feels so much more final, I suppose, yeah. um, in a book. And I didn't get very long to write it at all. I got... I think four months. Um, mm -hmm. It is quite a small book, but it was uh, quite an undertaking. But I think that actually helped having such a tight deadline meant that yeah. I really couldn't put it off. But I definitely, and this is something I deal with anytime I write something, like I deal with perfectionism in that I feel like I have to have every sentence right, yeah. perfectly right before I move on to the next. And mm. that's a really <laughs> slow way to write. So I really have to just keep reminding myself like write first, uh, edit later. Like yes. you can go back and edit it, but just get something down onto the paper. And how I approached it was very much like monotasking, like just like getting in the zone, um, getting laser focused and being like, right, okay, I'm going to do this section in this chapter in this yeah. like one hour working session. And that's the only way I could have got it done. Like yeah. otherwise it just felt way too overwhelming. Like when you've got mm -hmm. this whole book ahead of you to write you're like god where do you even start so it was just you know gi giving myself a chance to just sit down get focused and just get something out onto the page and then come back and finesse later um that was definitely the way to go mm. and how did you feel when it was all done do you have like a, a hard copy as well yeah oh i i maybe i can show it to the the people yeah, at home definitely i'll just, I'll just grab it <laughs> So this Yay. is the book and when I finally got it, it was just such a, like, it was just such a long process, like it, yeah. from writing it to then, you know, the editing process. And then, you know, it was probably a good, I don't know, six months after that until it finally came out. So to finally have it in my hands, it was such a relief to be like, wow, this book actually exists. And the first time mm -hmm. I saw it in a bookstore was pretty, um, yeah surreal and exciting um but yeah i'm just glad it's it's out in the world now and mm -hmm. you know and then it's been so amazing you know people from the other side of the world like posting that you know mm -hmm. they've got the book and you're like wow it's impacting people from yeah. you know millions of miles away it, it's pretty crazy mm. would you write another one 
Uh, probably not anytime soon, <laughs> unless someone asks. So the funny thing yeah. with this is I wasn't planning on writing a book. I was okay. approached through the blog by uh, my publishers in New York, just happened mm. to stumble across the blog and they were looking for someone to write, I guess, on the topic of self-development. So I probably wouldn't, I mean, I was, I'm a writer, so I always, mm. you know, it's always a goal for writers. I feel like, you know, it's like a rite of passage to have your first book, but I wasn't planning on writing one anytime soon, but, um, and it is quite a process, but you know, if the, if the right idea or the right opportunity um, comes up, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's really cool to hear. Um, with so much on the go and, you know, so much happening, how do you kind of manage your time in between everything? Yeah, so like I mentioned, I'm not a naturally organised person mm -hmm. at all. Like, um, but I've kind of had to become one, like, yeah. especially when I was, I guess, when I was working at Girlfriend, I was also finishing off the book. I was also doing client work. I was also doing the podcast and the blog. And I think that really, it, it forced me to get organised. So, you know, even before mm -hmm. that, like, I, I've, I don't remember a time before I've been juggling lots of different things. Like it's just always been the way. So it's forced me to get organized, but I'm definitely not like, I'm a big fan of, I guess, things like time blocking and having mm. your calendar, I knowing exactly what you're doing when, but I'm not like, I don't live or die by it. I don't believe in being super rigid with your time. Cause I feel like you can actually get, I guess, overwhelmed by mm. feeling like you have to have everything perfectly organized. So I'm a huge um, believer and just having like my top three priorities every day. Yeah. So I use a journal called the best self code journal. Mm -hmm. And I guess it has like a prompt for your three things you're working on that day. And they're like the three things that if you get them done, it would make the day a win. Yeah. Um, so I'm, that's how I really make sure I'm getting the right things done. Not just like doing all the things, but doing the things that are actually going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. So I think that's, that's the thing. And then also, like I mentioned, um, monotasking, doing just one thing at a time. Yeah. I use a weird app called Focus Mate, which I've mentioned a few times on different things. It's like, it's going to sound super weird, but it's like a monotasking thing where you actually get like paired up with someone from like all over the world for like a virtual mm. co working session. It's like 50 okay. minute like productivity sprints. And like you say, I'm going to be working on this. And like, they say, I'm going to be working on that. And then you just like work away and then check in at the end. Oh, that's which, cool. Yeah, yeah, it is like strange the first time you do it because it's like complete strangers, but you get used to it. And I feel like that's been so huge. Like something I teach in my course is like the importance of accountability um, mm. for keeping you productive, whether it's internal or external accountability. Like I feel like without that, it's hard to get anything done. So yeah. They would be the main things. That's how I, that's what I rely on to, yeah. <laughs> to get done what I need to. Yeah. And like life is messy. Like you said before, like it's chaos and there's no, you know, order to things and, and things happen and you've got to be flexible. And um, as long as you kind of have a focus of what you want to get done and not again, put that pressure on yourself, like it's going to happen. It's, it's, you'll get there. It's not about getting there all in one day, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And I definitely swear by breaking things down into like smaller manageable mm, chunks. Like when you're looking at something like, I guess, like creating a course or writing a book, like it just feels like inconceivable to get it done when you're looking at like the end result. Yeah. Whereas if you're like, okay, I'm going to do chapter one this week, I'm going to do chapter two the next week. It just makes it feel so much more manageable because you've got a plan and you only have to focus on the next thing ahead of you you don't have to be looking at the the big big picture yeah and thinking of you know one step ahead um what does the future look like for you what's kind of in the works what's next um yeah what's what's the future for you yeah uh lots of things so i am at the moment i'm working on getting my course procrastinate the action taker on like so it's available all the time so i'm relaunching it on evergreen as they say um yeah. i'm also working on getting my one-on-one -on -one coaching services up and I'm um, sort of taking on like beta testing, not beta testing, but you know, beta clients for that at the moment, which is super exciting. Um, and I'm also about to start studying psychology, which oh, is wow. cool. super exciting. Yeah. So I'm doing a graduate diploma in um, psych starting Amazing. from October, which is like a bachelor condensed into 
1.7 years part time. So about to embark on that and really learn more about psychology and the brain and all these things that absolutely fascinates me so that I can, um, you know, use it in my coaching and my courses and really use that knowledge to make a, make a greater impact. Um, so yeah, they're the main things that I've got in the works at the moment, maybe some more products. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I've always got a million things on the go. (laughs) That's all right. How I do. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Well, if the listeners were, you know, loving what you were saying today, how can they kind of, um, get in contact and learn a bit more? Yeah. So www.agirlinprogress.com is where (laughs) all all the things live it's the blog you can find the um our podcast from there which the lovely casey is going to be on um and you can also follow me on instagram at emma j norris um and a girl at progress at underscore a girl in progress um as well for all the all the social things and inspiring quotes and practical tips that's what we like to share all the good stuff (laughs) I'll have it linked in the show notes as well. Um, but there's just one more question. It's how I wrap it all up. Um, and I'm interested to hear what you will say. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? I would say that people don't care as much as you think they do. Like I spent a lot of time and I still struggle with this worrying about what other people think um, of me. And I've realized as I've gotten older, like people you'll never know what people mm. think of you. And half the time, everyone's too wrapped up in their own things to really be thinking about you much at all. And it's probably pretty rare that they'll be thinking anything negative about you. So yeah. I think just, you know, stay on your own path and, and do you and don't worry about what other people think because most of the time they're not. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, I love that. That's so true. People are wrapped up in their own lives, doing their own things, um, get out of your head start working on that perfectionism and me and Emma have got your back. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Thank you so much, Emma. That was amazing. Um, And yeah, I'm sure the listeners are going to get so much out of this. So thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome.